Shadow of the Erd Tree will be here in June. Hooray! But what if you lack the patience to make it those many months? What if it's your Mesmer the Impaler, and you need it now? Through careful dissection and study of the trailer, I was able to piece together a build that really makes you feel like Mesmer, using only weapons and spells from the base game. It's time to impale the lands between. To watch these ones live, follow us on Twitch. I've got some big ideas to get through before that DLC comes out. Join the Patreon to support the channel. We've got exclusive videos over there and polls to let you decide what video comes next. And if you don't have money to give me, just like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. It would be very cool if we could hit 100,000 subscribers before June. Now, let's get started on a hot build by building Mesmer's Flame. We're doing this as an NG plus run. Normally when deciding whether it's a secret starting class or an NG plus situation, I just see if there's a method of dealing damage before a boss or after only one boss. But for what I have in mind for Mesmer, so much of it is behind bosses that I decided we're just gonna do it in NG plus. Like the Drake set in Faramazula. I think it's the best one for Mesmer's drip and I just love the set. I how could you not like the Drake? We're building this on top of the Elmer run. Google Mesmer tops Elmer on your work computer for the specific reasoning, then head to the Weeping Peninsula for some farming. Let's talk about why I'm farming, what I'm farming, while I'm farming. I'm pretty sure Mesmer's Impaler is going to be a great spear. I mean that as the category, not a review of the weapon's quality. More importantly than it being a great spear in category though, Mesmer likes to jump. Dude is bouncing around like Bugs Bunny in this trailer. Sure, we could use the jumping attacks and say that's us doing it, but I'd rather get an Ash of War that sends us skyward. Currently, there is one great spear that actually lets you change its Ash of War, the Lance. And we're Drake, not Lance, easy to confuse them if you're a Pokemon fan. That gets me looking to other categories of weapon, and the Halberd has the Guardian Sword Spear. It doesn't have Mesmer's impressive length, so we might not be impaling, but Halberds have more than enough inches to satisfy. And it has a sword at the end, which I like. This isn't a nightmare farm like last week's video. It only takes about five minutes thanks to Elmer's high arcane. Now that we've got the spear, let's get the jump so we can attack like a dragoon in Final Fantasy. I can't wait to start dragooning for hours on end. We've got to run through the safe path of Stormvale past some birds that want to throw bombs. Uh, hang on, I have to give some flowers here from Soft. Uh, birds that throw bombs absolutely go to design no notes. Cowabunga over the ramparts, then watch me gallantly streaming on twitch.tv slash Tulak the Barbarian. Fall down and the floor broke. Oh no, I'm fine. Let's kill the beetle and get the storm assault so we can really start hopping. Dragooning of course leads to dragon come onion seal in the cringe folk hero's grave. I thought I was running fast enough, but we get hit right at the end. Bummer. Let's impale this banished knight, get really deep in his guts, and get that come onion seal on our hands. The seal Mesmer is using doesn't look one for one with the dragon communion, but it's very close. Another beetle on Lernia Lake will give us the blood flame blade, that way we can get the big jump without losing hot thrusts, but that hot thrust is unfortunately on a standard smithing stone weapon. Let's dive into the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave for a few somber stones for the casting seal on the way down. Can this level 150 tarnished handle a crystallion? Yeah. Storm Assault kind of just stunlocks it. Looks very cool while doing so. Now we can buy Smithing Stones 1 and 2. A lot of people ask, do I count the NG building towards the metrics on the NG plus runs? So let's clear that up. Yes. If we really wanted to, we could just come beat this Crystallion in NG plus. It really wouldn't be that much different. I'm just doing this for convenience. My metrics are meant to gauge how fun a run is. If farming takes a long time, that hurts the metrics and makes it worse because it also hurts the fun and makes the fun worse. Kind of ends up balancing out though since NG plus runs just get to set all the way up before they start. Bell bearing 2 in the sealed tunnel by the way and bell bearing 3 is in the mountaintops of the giants. Oh hey we weren't done in Stormvale Castle gotta get the iron wet blade so we can make this sword spear keen. It has a scaling with dex once you turn it keen and ends up doing some crazy damage while making it scale only with dex so we don't have to invest in strength at all. Moon Mother can help us crank that that dexterity, vigor, and a mixture of arcane and faith for the casting seal, plus some mind, because I've got resource expensive spells that I am sure we will use. You can't keep getting away with it! 
Speaking of, we can go back to the Weeping Peninsula and clean a turtle's toes to get the extra Fire Giant's hole. Red hair is associated with the Fire Giants and Mesmer is a pair of jean shorts and overalls away from having his bike stolen. Cash that in for the Burn O Flame incantation, it makes Pillars of Fire, and is the closest we'll get to the bunch of Fire Spears shooting out of the ground attack that he does in the trailer, even if I am 95% sure that is the Ash of War on the spear. Also wait, O Flame? Red hair? Are the Fire Giants just... Irish? All you dorks complain about my mispronunciation of old Gaelic tongues, but you've been saying bear no flammy wrong the whole time. Need some runes for these dang tools, let's kill another dragon and help yellow those dragon eyes. Borealis be ignorealis no longer. I am also 95% sure Mesmer is gonna turn into a snake dragon in phase two, but until we see that, we can't put dragon spells in the build. Oh no, I'm so upset. They're some of my favorites. We'll just go for the Guardian's Garrison and get stunlocked to death by a dog. Believe it or not, that wasn't my goal here. We're here to jump off the side, beat these dogs before they can gank us, while we fight the fire monk with the one-eyed shield. Why do his spells deal good damage when our spells are dog water? I don't know. Upstairs, we get the Fire Giant prayer book, though. Muriel insists in telling us about Merica and Radagon's wedding. Boring, but then we can buy Giant's Flammy Taki Thee. I think that's the Irish pronunciation. It looks like he's charging up a big old fireball here, although with the video paused, kind of looks like that Wicker Man fight at another point in the trailer. Like the triangular-ish shape is kind of similar. It's probably a new spell, but we can't find out until June. Would you show me something if I couldn't have it? With all that hotness, it's a shock it took us this long to go to Mount Gelmir. We're climbing ladders like it's Snake Eater, but in Shadow of the Erd Tree, Snake eats you! I'm really just running through uh, all my bad European accents today. Slashing up the demi-humans in the Volcano Cave isn't necessary, but I'll be honest, I never tried to find the coil shield before and I got lost. It's on the rightmost path from the beginning, I'm much more of a good gamers go left type boy, so it took a minute. Technically, we don't see Mesmer's snakes attack hacking in the trailer, but those snakes are gonna bite people. Come on. I'm imagining Mesmer is gonna be like a Dark Souls pyromancer. Sure, you got the fire, but you also get your poison. Thankfully, the coil shield doesn't need to be leveled up to get more poison buildup. It's the same at level zero, and poison procs are all we're gonna use it for. More snakes in Volcano Manor, specifically the Man Serpent Spirit Ash. I'll try to do most of my fights without it. There's just some ganks that need correcting. We'll test the coil shield against Godfroy, and it looks like literally one hit gets him poisoned. Very cool. Some blood flame on the Spear makes the damage pretty solid, considering it's not quite maxed out yet. Bloodflame procs 40 bleed over two seconds, which leads to cool moments where you crit, then the bleed pops, and the second hit of the crit lands. So fucking cool. Giants Flammy and Burn O Flammy both are charged, so Godfrey's icon should jack that damage up. I was hoping I could just use the Giants Flammy to hit the Putrid Avatar from this clifftop, but alas, it doesn't go far enough. Kind of a limited reach on that one. I guess we'll have to fight them the old fashioned way, and wouldn't you know? it, the giant firebomb does some pretty good damage to the tree. Now it can do even more damage thanks to the flame shrouding cracked tier. At this point, we just need upgrade materials, somber stones from Faramazula, somber stones in Mogwin Palace by breaking the sanguine noble's ankles with our sick movement tech. We jump up and jump down. That's the sick movement tech. Snakeweed is in the Tomb's Ward Catacombs, then the Caled Catacombs, then Gelmnir Hero's Grave. Wait, back it up. Something funny happens on the way there. Since we're going down the Gelmnir ladders, the Grafted Scion is jumping in a way that the game doesn't give him invincibility for. Aim for the bushes. Now Gelmnir Hero's Grave for the six and seven. Wait, sorry, another funny thing happened. The dog got on the elevator and pushed us off. I'll get the next one. I'll get the next one. Before Blair witching it at the bottom. Kill it with fire. I'm not taking chances on a Blair Witch dog. Finally, we go to the giant conquering hero's grave for the last glove warts. I would love to use the giant seal. It would boost all of our spells damage by 20%. But Mesmer looks like they're using the cum onion. So like Selen before, we have to use an unoptimized casting seal. These spells are better than Selen's though. It's a low bar. Oh, also the Elmer build, never grab the Ritual Shield Talisman, that sucked. We're not making that mistake again. If Mesmer is gonna be the baddest dude in the DLC, which actually I think there will probably be a harder boss behind him, uh, he should be smart though. And grabbing the Ritual Shield Talisman is just smart. That's all of our setup and it did take some time. But if you wanna save some time making dinner, why don't you check out today's sponsor, Factor. 
That's right gamers, this video is sponsored by Factor. With the DLC on the way, you don't have time to go to the grocery store, meal prep, and do dishes. You need to be spending your time gaming. Factor sends you meals that are ready to eat in two minutes. They're never frozen, and never frozen means they are packed with flavor. But it's not just meals, Factor has snacks, smoothies, and more to give you a midday energy boost. It's like a healing flask in real life, so you'll be prepared for whatever eldritch horror Miyazaki throws at you. Get as many meals as you want with deliveries between 6 and 18 meals in a week, and you can pause or reschedule your deliveries if you're going out of town. I can't transmit taste through YouTube, though I've been trying to find a way. So if you want to taste these delicious meals for yourself, the best way to do it is to try a box. Head to Factor75.com and enter offer code HEIGHT50 at checkout for 50% off your first Factor box. You'll also get two wellness shots for free from three available flavors every box you get as long as you maintain a subscription. So stop waiting, start eating, and save your time for gaming. Now that my belly's full, I'm gonna get back to building Mesmer, the Impaler. I hardly know her. Damn it, Michael, pay attention, man. Now for everyone's favorite section of an NG plus run, Phil scientifically and desperately tries to make the spells work because he really wants them to, but they flounder in comparison to a weapon. Gotta work on that title. Giant's Flammy costs 30 mana to do 880 damage after taking the time to charge up. Burn or Flammy gives us no poise and only shoots columns up around me. Literally can't even get that off. Then I hit the jump attack with the spear without a buff on it. It gets 834 damage. Faster, has no FP cost and ends up doing more damage when we buff it with the blood flame blade. Oh, and the Flammy is getting a 20% boost from our physic tier and a 15% boost from the Godfrey icon. Jump attack is just a jump attack on a halberd. I am starting to think that maybe you don't believe in me. I do believe in you. I just know you're gonna fail. Who knows, maybe one of these will turn out to be super clutch in one hyper-specific situation so that I can say all spells are good now. Okay, let's use a great spell against Margit. The Viper Bite Ash of War. It poisons in two bites, that's pretty cool. Poison's kind of useless though, because Blood Flame Blade is actually a pretty good spell. You put it on your weapon, your weapon does more damage. Works great. And because we're using the Come Onion with Arcane Scaling, the bleed procs faster. Not this time. Oh, it, it doesn't? Well, at least the come onion scales with the arcane really fast, so that extra arcane will translate to bigger fire damage. No. Huh, only ever scales with faith. That kind of sucks, but it sucks less because you're just putting it on a weapon. Get hit by everything on the danger path. If you want to be the impaler first, you must feel the joy of being impaled. Tried using the new path to avoid the second ballista, but that didn't work. Just run and press circle sometimes, gamers. Godric gets the blood flame blade treatment and the storm jumps. Those do more damage than giant's flammy, take eight less mana, and also do 36 stance damage and give you super armor. <laughs> Oh, I guess we didn't hot swap in the giant seal to boost the damage, but like, if you need two seals, a tear, and a charge spell talisman to meet the damage of an Ash of War that just needs like, a talisman, and you still do less stance damage, take longer to get it off, and don't get super armor, like, I don't know, y'all, I want spells to be good, they just aren't. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because I'm the only one who thinks they're bad. I know I'm probably wrong. Just feels like I'm dusting it as objectively as I can, and they're losing the weapons every goddamn time. Enough of all that negativity, let's get back to imagining getting impaled in Fort Hyde. Then we warp over to the Dragon Barrow and imagine Mesmer in Fort Faroth. Doesn't have the same ring to it. Now we can hit Altus, so let's get back to Godric's room, and looks like we forgot to kill Gostok. Sorry, dude, get impaled. Grab the key, warp through to Raya Lucaria, might as well take them to school while we're here. Red Wolf gets redder thanks to our hot stick, which which does not get a bleed proc. I thought it did because it just did that much damage, but that's just the damage. It just looks like bleed procs. Cool. Renala next, phase one is a one cycle. Phase two is just as fast. She can summon a dragon, but I don't care. We'll just keep pressing forward until she's toast. Looks like there's gonna be a new carrion royal in the DLC. Hot stuff. Hopefully you have a little more HP than your learning counterpart. We don't have to stay in Altus for long, just touch the grace and we're ready to party with Radon. Apparently, he has to die to enter the DLC per a Miyazaki interview. You can definitely fight Moog before you fight Radon. Seems weird, but okay. He's weakest to fire, so we'll give him the giant's flammy. They whiff a lot, because this big fireball gets thrown about as far as you nerds can throw a football. Boom. Roasted. 
The damage is fine. It probably would have gone faster if I just got in there with the spear, but cowering behind an army and lobbing bombs works too. Volcano Manor next sounds like a hot place to go. Let's make shrimp skewers by impaling Boggart, then make friends with Raya. I don't know why, but I feel like we're gonna get along. Do you wanna like ride around on my back and slither around during my boss fight later? If Raya is back in the DLC, by the way, I'll buy five copies. Balls in your court, Miyazaki. Do you want 200 bucks added to the budget for Elden Ring 2 or not? Oh my God, there were so many snakes in Volcano Manor. I guess you Godskin Noble, hope you're ready for some impaling. It's got good fire resistance, but most of our damage is physical from the spear. Blood Flame is just extra souse and some bleed after a crit that makes the souse more worth it. The Serpent Hunter looks more like Mesmer's Impaler than the Sword Spear, but you can't buff it. Maybe I'll try it for like one boss. It's Rykard with the Serpent Hunter. Fast forward, selector. Wait, uh, okay. We summoned the Man Serpent Ash to act as a distraction. It's basically 100% fireproof, so it'll go into the magma. Keep in mind, it's gonna make some noise while it's fighting right guard in there. The magma it puts down has a hitbox and makes noise every time. So like, it got really loud in my headphones. I have game sound turned down on the stream, but it was distracting. It doesn't do a lot of damage because Rykard is also fireproof, but they smash into each other without doing damage and you get to hit Rykard without him coming for you. It makes it marginally easier, even though it's already easy. I'm the first person to do a Mesmer boss fight. Looks like Miyazaki fucked up though. This one doesn't have any weapons or spells, so I guess we'll just poison it with the quail shield and smack it around with the bleed stick. It's truly messed up that the Guardian Sword Spear is a halberd, a weapon class with arguably the best R1 in the game. And they made the R1 on this one better. Disgusting, but in a cool way. Heading into Carry a Manor, I noticed the finger creepers have a purple energy attack that stun locks you. It's the same color as the purple butterfly lady in the trailer. Could we be getting finger creeper spells? I don't know. I'm guessing that's the spell you get after the Mikola fight and it's like Rapport from Dark Souls 3, but we're all just guessing. I think it'd be great if after the DLC comes out, everyone comes back here and realizes I am never wrong, but there's a good chance that I am wrong. And uh, if I am, don't mention it. Loretta gets the hot stick, even if she can't bleed, it's just more damage. There's no downside to turning it on. Hitless fight, pretty clean, no big deal. I'm just kind of cracked at this game. Say hi to our half sister probably you know what i'm gonna throw a curveball and do some weirder predictions mesmer isn't a radagon baby and therefore not related to ronnie merica was the deathbed companion of this old dirty bastard that is the same old dirty bastard as this old dirty bastard before she became a god we all know old dirty bastards like it raw and there are two other merica and old bastard kids that are also super bosses they're triplets conceived through death like what fia is doing with godwin and and thus can't go to the lands between and be near the Ur tree. Mikola is in the shadow to connect the Halic tree so everyone denied grace by the Ur tree can be happy and chill. And Mikola is good. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I could just do the same theories as everyone else and we'll tie, or I can swing for the fences and win or lose. I don't wanna tie, I'm fine losing. Torch is lit, let's fight a moose that is necessary for this category because I don't know why. We also summoned the snake, I don't know why. We also didn't teleport the moose, I don't know why. I think I'm just autopiloting. Almost died greeting into the healing, but then it teleports right next to where we were. That never happens, damn. I wish that happened more. Grab Ronnie's knife, give her the knife, get the statue, and go to the incel river main. Not a place for Mesmer the Impaler. Dude is clearly inspired by the penetrator of Demon's Hole, Mesmer is just impaling Elden Rings, but they are for sure both boning down. Now, if you're impaling or penetrating in the Lake of Rot, make sure you wear protection and bring more than five flasks. It's a riveting boss fight against time. Press circle, hold forward, and drink juice as late as you can. Am I going to make it? Yeah, it was fine. I've never been punished in my entire life. Astell is another one of those remembrance bosses that makes you say, hey, why is this a remembrance boss? Don't get grabbed and pray it goes for the easy to punish attacks. We get a good mixture of good and bad. When we have to back off, that's actually a good time to reapply the Blood Flame Blade. Even with the full charge attack and combo, we don't get a stance break. Perf extra life, the stance boost doesn't happen until NG plus two, but like... You sure about that? 
Finish it off with a big fireball. Great spell, happy to have it. Never going to make fun of it again. Valiant Gargoyles get the snake treatment. I really like the Spirit Ash, even if it's not that good. It distracts and that's really all I want it to do. Our damage is nice and solid, even without the boost from the Blood Flame Blade. Not totally sure why I didn't put it on, but then something happens. I literally had to go into Premiere and go frame by frame here. Here's what's happening. The Poison Cloud from the Gargoyle off screen was stunning me and staggered perfectly with the Wind Box Torn tornado it was making so we staggered from the poison staggered from the wind box and repeated until we died i literally couldn't roll or move second try i got poisoned right away and all i want them to do is either buff the poison mist spell to have this poise chunking like this mist does or take the poison interruption away from this one one or the other and i think i'd honestly prefer the poison mist buff that would make that spell better and i really truly am rooting for spells regardless of what people think one final rush to the royal capital, slash up those ants for the extra rune arcs, but we won't need them. Mesmer isn't going to die again. At all. Fia's shrimps are about to be thrust by the long, hard spear of the Impaler. Manservant will join us for the gank. I'm trying to cut back on using spirit ashes only for gank fights. I don't need the damage, I just need to fix the initiative. Blood flame spear carves through the first guy, and then I remember to use the jump. Why am I forgetting to jump? Hey, lots of small dudes. Maybe this is the time to get some love from Burn or Flammy. It works all right. Probably not as fast as just hitting things, but there is style points. I'll give it that. Time to hit up the Royal Capital, where I'm sure my favorite chair will be waiting for me. Royal Capital, this Urge Tree Avatar only gives us 50,000 runes, but Giant's Flammy is pretty good against trees, so maybe it's still worth the effort. Took a sip of coffee at the wrong time and just got bodied at the West Rampart Grace. So much for not dying again. Last one, I promise. No Blood Flame for the Godfrey Shade. The extra fire would help, but we just jump him. Put the three minute timer on and oh god, the camera messed up. That's not what I want when I'm in a rush for a boss. Hey Morgoth, what happened to my chair, dude? I was looking forward to sitting down shooting the shit but no blood flame runs in the family i guess ours is hot enough that we save the pickle did we save it looks like oh no 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 no, no. ah we saved it we didn't save it but it's okay hey yozu our stats are pretty solid, actually. Let's take a detour to get Radon's Great Rune instead. I feel like Mesmer is going to have a huge amount of health. God, I hope I'm wrong. Maybe he'll just be Melania Hard with Red Wolf health. That would be kind of sick. For Biden Lands, the DLC will be coming out a little bit before wildfire season, so it's a nice reminder that Indigenous Americans' cultural burning clears out smaller brush and makes wildfires much less common and much less severe. Let's boogie woogie woogie through the mountaintops of the giants to the fire giant. Blood Flame Blade on the fire giant might seem counterintuitive, but the bleed should help if it ever popped. We get to phase two, still nothing. Accidentally get the crit, then try to use Burn O Flammy while he also does Burn O Flammy, and it gets a little hard to see what's going on. His balls come out, and we almost get body blocked to death by the shadow of that Erd tree. That's the name of the DLC. Also, Fire Giant only has like a 50% fire resistance, so the fire isn't all that bad. Although, I think it would be funny if the Wicker Man giant boss was weak to fire. Like, what if you can just make him overheat? Anyway, Melina set the Erd Tree on fire while that we both have one eye missing. What's the deal with that? No time to dwell. We're in for Amazula, and that means it's time for the Godskin duo. With Bernie, of course. Bernie is required for this fight. You can't walk through the fog gate without him. Fun fact. Absolutely body the chunky, then get hit with one stray attack from the skinny. Bummer. I could have done this hitless. But if we're not perfect, let's at least have some fun. Big jump used that super poise, so it doesn't matter if we get hit with the black flame anti-air. That dude got tossed. Can't make the swag jump with the storm jump big bummer but we still make it so that's neat just skip the draconic tree sentinel though we won't have the option when his death is mandatory in the dlc trust me i know this i'm calling that right now you have to kill this tree sentinel to enter the dlc malekath time our sword spear length is helping out a lot but blood flame doesn't get a single bleed really this is turning out to be a pretty disappointing spell which is wild because i enjoy so many of them Normally, Sir Gideon Offnir claims to be the all-knowing, but does he know the lore of Shadow of the Erd Tree? If he did, he's not sharing, he's just spamming every spell without consuming FP or stamina. If that's how spells worked for us, I would love them. They really would just be as good as people say they are. Three minute timer again to go fight Godfrey. It's not gonna go great if you just get hit by every attack, dude. It takes so many hits to get this dude to break down. We get a fully charged attack and a couple of hits to push him into phase two, then just keep jump attack 
attacking him, and dude ain't breaking down. Maybe it's just the placebo effect telling me Stan's got higher energy plus, but like... I don't believe you. Well, at least we don't have to worry about the pickle running out anymore. Okay, attempt two. The stance breaks a little faster. Maybe the recovery time just gets boosted? I don't know. We die. Didn't dodge enough. This time, I remember that I don't need four blue flasks if the only magic I'm using is blood flame blade maybe a couple times. Ooh, I just heard stream film make a good point. The extra health and damage is probably why I think the stance isn't breaking. It changes the rhythm of the fight and where the phase transitions happen. That's what's messing with my brain. Oh, also, blood flame doesn't make him bleed once despite being on our weapon the entire time. Don't use this for bleed unless your weapon already has innate bleed. I bet this would go very hard on the vulgar militia saw. Radagon, probably our dad, but I'm holding out that he's not just so I can be a special little snowflake. He tries to grab us, which for sure means he's not our dad. Dads don't hug their sons, right? That's an experience we all share. Okay, checking the Burn Wolf Lamy reviews, it has really good stance pressure and is great against bosses with big hitboxes. Elden Beast has a huge hitbox and only 10% fire resistance. It flops again. So we're just gonna hit it with the spear and run away from Elden Stars. Cursed idea for the DLC, Elden Stars, but stack a death blight? Think about it, that'd be pretty terrible. We win through hitting things, the ultimate power. Now we just gotta burn away the grace of the rest of these so-called super bosses. Get ready for Mesmer's hot impaling. It's time to cook. We'll impale the castle's hole, RIP to everyone who thought the chapel here would be the DLC entrance, but not really, you didn't die, you were just wrong about a video game prediction, and that's okay. Niall is a gang fight, so let's get our little snake buddy. I think Raya will be Mesmer's best friend, and is the secret boss after you beat him. If I'm wrong, I will give a random viewer all of my NFTs. If I'm wrong, may God take my apes. This spear is just ripping. Niall has a halberd, but it is not built like the sword spear. Real rip to this dude. Old man gets blown up the perfumer takes two fully charged flammies to die in lernia with a plus 10 seal Penguin Noble just gets jumped on. Pretty mean, obviously penguins aren't great jumpers. We're in Mogwin Palace now. I skipped the dark cave. We're not dying a lot this run. We got plenty of rune arcs. And remember, we're not dying again, other than those other times that we died. Moog, time with the blood flame blade. He is so weak to bleed, but it only makes Moog bleed once in phase one. Chug a lug -a through the phase transition and just keep trying to keep that pressure up. Where's the bleed? Where is it? This dude has the bleed resistance of an anime boy's nose when he sees boobies. This should be like an ad for Hawaiian punch. That one bleed proc we got in phase one is the only one we get. Even the just put it on a weapon spell is letting me down. At least we've opened up the path to the DLC. Can't go there yet, but I'll see you soon. Blasigisax is a big mother, one of the biggest mothers in the game. I really, truly want Burn Oflami to work. So after the stance break, when it's sitting still, we turn it on and would have done more damage if we just kept swinging the halberd. That's the last test. From now on, we're just gonna hit stuff. I feel like I really tried and that's all one can do. Placidious X gets in front of us for the Omega laser. Not great, but we only have to deal with the fire breath. Could be worse. It's just not the free win it normally is. We have to spend a little more time in the TP phase. Carrion study hall. Quit out, then fall. Up the elevator. Hug Fia twice. Fia's dream invade Giants flammy flinging. Fortisax can't chase. Ranged attacks are nice. Just kidding, we uh, did start the fire, and ranged spells are good against Fortisax. Even if Flammy does comparable damage to the Magic Glint Blade, which is so much cheaper and so much faster. At least I'm dunking on it by comparing it to another spell this time. More stuff to skip, the liturgical town isn't funny. I don't like getting grabbed here, but at least when I do, it's worth mentioning. Nobody wants a detailed narration of basic platforming. Howling Tree platforming is a little more complicated. We avoid all the bubbles in the rot and make the swag jump. Time to use a polearm against a horse girl. If you play Fire Emblem, you know Loretta doesn't stand a chance, set up the fire, and then just hit the R1s so we have enough time to dodge. At one point, we just push her into the corner, but those bleed procs are simply not happening. I think Blood Flame works better in a long, drawn-out fight, but I'm too aggressive, and it never has time to cook all the way. Remember, it's 40 bleed buildup over the course of two seconds. I can get three hits off in that time, but the most it will do for those two seconds is 40. If we just had something like the Vulgar Militia Saw, it would be doing 55 bleed buildup per hit, or 165 in that two second window. The benefit comes from it taking two seconds, meaning the cooldown on the bosses doesn't start for two seconds if you're struggling to get your hits in. But my hold forward ass would never. Also, obviously, on the Vulgar Militia Saw, this would equate to 205 build bleed up in two seconds, which is pretty insane. 
Bloodflame, and also where Bloodflame Blade really shines as an extra sauce on a weapon that is already bleeding stuff. We have a weird amount of runes, so I just blew up a putrid avatar using the Flammy. Look, I got a good use out of it, everyone. Now we'll take on Melania, and I think Delayed Bleed might actually help while we wait for Windows to get in. She super armors through the Storm Jump, and the damage still looks bad. Why? Why is this the first boss where the damage has looked this bad? We're even buffed up with fire, which she's weakest to. Okay, that is the last death. Let's bring the snake to help us in phase one, keep her distracted. The magma is also great at keeping stance pressure up. Every time she touches it, there is a little hit, making sure that that doesn't go away, and it helps us get our crits on. I got boxed into a wall, can't outrun the ducky dance, that's bad. But thanks to our absurdly large health pool, we're alive. Finally, get a bleed in the last 25% of her health. I think I'd prefer if we just had faster bleed. In phase two, we start with some flammies, but then I remember that allegedly, Burno Flammy is really good against Melania. I doubt it. You never know. All right, that's the last death, unless we die trying to use Burno Flammy, because that doesn't count. It's science. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That one doesn't count there. It's nice that it sends her skyward, waiting for her to whiff an attack. We can get one off to send her up, then charge one while she's on the ground. I don't think the stance damage is particularly good. That's just spell enjoyers thinking that anything that has any stance pressure equivalent to a straight sword is really good at breaking stance. But it pretty safely brings us to phase two. So we throw some big balls while she's in the onion and then get the cycle going again. Still no stance break, but it is working. Onion two, some big bombs, but the RNG is not on our side and she avoids the next pillars. Ducky dance, I got rotted with no flasks. We had to kill her fast or die and we died. But that is the last one for sure. Time to pill her. She is not feeling aggressive this time, sort of just watching us waste our FP. It's smart, but it's not really how her AI works usually, preferring instead to open up a summer home in my ass. Phase two, big balls, then dodge a few attacks before pillaring. The super armor is super annoying, as is the clone attack that's entirely unpunishable for five seconds. We end up ducking a few of her attacks, and she's so low at the start of the second onion, I get greedy and get rotted. We only need a few more hits for the win. See, I told you I wasn't dying again. In six hours and two minutes, we beat 30 bosses and died nine times. Lots of setup hurt this one, but we were pretty safe for a good KD ratio. That's gonna go at the bottom of S tier or top of A tier. I think I'll go the bottom of S tier, the main boss of the DLC, and I'm excited. We'll lean on favoring him. Guardian Sword Spear is a cracked weapon. There are better buffs you could put on it though, like Electrify Armament. You could also improve the boost by getting basically any other seal, except the Golden Order seal, since damage boost is always purely faith-based. Giant Seal would also help the spell damage if you really wanted to use those spells. I guess they have their use cases. I'd still say they're both pretty bad outside of a few fights. NG Plus, you could get a second Fire Giant Seal for a 44% damage boost, and that would go pretty hard. I'm not going to pretend I don't see the appeal of throwing a giant-ass fireball. Just know it takes a lot more effort to make it worth it as opposed to, you know, just swinging a halberd. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We'll probably make a real Mesmer video in June when the DLC comes out. Join the Patreon to vote in the polls or watch exclusive videos and follow us on Twitch so we can hang out while I play Elden Ring.